Shino Achebe emerged and world literature changed forever. There will be a lot to be said about Shino Achebe, but I know that uh, for a man who said in his next life, he would still come back as a Nigerian. <laughs> the greatest tragedy of it all is that he had to die in exile. Nigerians found him. African literature wants him. And I think I had said somewhere else. There is a sense in which anybody and everybody who teaches African literature, no matter where in the world today, is an employee of Chima Chima. We will remember him for his legacy. Thank you. Thank you for your time. 
kindness and for always remembering that I need to be held up. I'm here before you as a literary scholar of sorts, but mostly I'm here before you as I'm a first daughter, so I belong to that caucus of first daughters of people land that you read about. And I was talking to some of my brothers earlier today and they said, you guys are always trouble. I said, yes, that's us. Call us trouble and we will answer. But today, you have to listen to us. Because I come to you today to celebrate one of my fathers that just passed. To ask you to help me, to help me cry, to help me dance, to help me understand what this life means when you can wake up of the morning and you lose something as big as Chinoachi. I thank you for your graciousness in coming here today. I thank you for mourning with us, with us Igbos, with us Nigerians, with us Africans, with us global literary scholars who cut their teeth on things fall apart. I want to end with Achebe's uh, first sentence in Things Fall Apart because it's like he was talking about himself when he talks about Okum was well known in all the mind villages of Umofia. Achebe was well known around the world in all the nine villages of the world. Thank you, and God bless you. Dear members of the African Literature Association, citizens and well-wishers of the great continent of Africa, one of the mightiest has fallen. Africa has lost one of her mightiest sons. The world has lost one of the greatest literary artists of our times. Today, Africa mourns, the whole world mourns. This is one of those earth-shattering occasions of which it will be asked, where were you when it happened? Where were you when the news was announced? Where were you when it was first whispered and then it was magnified in words and tones we did not expect to hear? Where were you when it came through that the great Chinua Achebe is no more? Chinua Achebe, the greatest of the heroes, the greatest of the champions of human dignity, the greatest of the champions of the African, of the dignity of the African personality, who represented all that is best in African life, past and present. Who in his life took so many titles that his own African community, titles that the whole world could give him, titles that were indeed far below what he deserved. In his traditional Ebolan, the talking drums would have started the communication of the unbelievable news plucking at the heartstrings of an old people, anxiously awaiting the naming of the fallen champion as the deed for his Yehudu of old, naming the community in this case, in which in this case would be both local and universal, before mentioning to expressions of disbelief, regret, and anguish the mighty name of Chinua Ache. For all of us, I want to make four points about Chinua Achebe. For all of us, Chinua Achebe was the doyen, the mighty man of African letters. He showed us where the rain began to beat us. He showed us where we are and where and who we ought to be. 
arguably more than any other African writer. His work celebrated the totality, not just of the African, of the Nigerian experience, but the whole of the African experience. That is, the grandeur and authenticity of the African traditional past against the denigrations of those who, for various reasons, wanted to put us down. And he did it without, in his own words, glossing over inconvenient facts. He also represented the clash between that traditional and vibrant African culture and the new methods and values introduced by an, at times, ignorant, arrogant, and uncomprehending imperialist onslaught. He showed us the temptations and indeed the complexity of the problems facing the new educated African elite as they prepared to take their countries to independence. He showed us the strengths and stresses in African life during the immediate post-independence era as African nations sought to rediscover themselves and define their values and respond to problems, some of which were the legacies of colonization and others, the consequences of the depredations of corrupt and incompetent leaders. He showed us the sufferings of the African peoples under repressive military or authoritarian regimes and brutal civil wars. But he also held out the hope of a glorious future in which all segments of the society, including students, workers, and particularly women, will play their right Heart, and the path will never close. Yes, he presented us with the totality of the African experience. The second point I would like to make about him is that he was a perfect gentleman. He taught us the values of humility and unpretentiousness. And in spite of his gagatua and achievements, he wrote his works um, in an unpretentious style. He, will, he showed us a humility and unpretentiousness that are reflected even in his style. I've never heard of a student who complained that Achebe was arrogant or that his works were difficult. He spoke to us vibrantly in language we could all understand. And in the wise man he was, he communicated, val communicated values we could all endorse. Nevertheless, he did not avoid the controversial issues, and he did not shrink from coming to the defense of those who had been unfairly treated. I remember, as um, Stephen Arnold has already um, mentioned, the first time I met him, it was at the early conference in Gainesville, Florida in 1980 where he was one of the featured speakers. Another speaker was James Baldwin. During James Baldwin's speech, someone making use of the latest technology then kept interrupting his speech through the last speaker system, accusing him of all sorts of things, including being a homosexual and making other rival remarks. Achebe, in his own remarks that immediately followed, robustly came to the defense of James Baldwin, publicly rebuking the interrupter and letting him know that such behavior was unseemly and certainly not in the African tradition. Thirdly, we ought to salute Chinua Achebe as one of the greatest intellectuals, one of the greatest African intellectuals, who, like Obiarika, was a man who fought about things. We all know about the celebrated response to Conrad's representation of the African personality and the African environment in Heart of Darkness. Also remember something else that happened at the early conference in Gainesville, which was devoted to an exploration and a definition of the African aesthetic, a rather blurred issue at the time. We academics had been struggling with the issue for days giving various opinions and failing to arrive at a consensus. But then, Chinua Chen, in his own inimitable way, and in a few choice sentences, 
gave a definition that was universally acceptable, and it was a definition that revolved around the concept of morality. Finally, let me say that it is a matter of the utmost regret that the Nobel Prize Committee, in its wisdom, never saw fit to award Chinua Achebe the Nobel Prize for Literature. Chinua Achebe, the trailblazer, the most compelling elder statesman of African letters, who showed us all how to do it, who speaks for the part is arguably the best known, the most widely read, the most prolifically translated novel of all times. But he does not need the validation of the Nobel Committee, for his validation remains in the works themselves and in the hearts and minds of scholars, students, teachers, and writers all over the world who are grateful to the Almighty that permitted such a mighty man of valor to exist. And so he has gone to join the ancestors. And we know that from that realm of existence, he will continue to regard us, his children, with his usual benevolence and tolerance. We mourn him, but we also celebrate his life and example, his incalculable contribution to humanity as a whole. We place him right up there with all the heroes like Nelson Mandela, who demonstrated the best that African life, that human life, ought to be. And we say, as I am sure he himself would have liked to say, may the path that he has charted never close. Thank you. Address that in a way 
in which he would communicate a new understanding to someone seeking information about Africa, about conditions in his part of the world, about what African existence was like. He came to the university many times after that. But another historic occasion was in 1975, when the, we had the inaugural meeting of the African Literature Association. It wasn't a conference of the African Literature Association. The association hadn't been formed yet. But we had the ambition to start the association, and we convened a symposium on black South African literature and invited all the black South African writers who were in the United States at that time to come and be the featured speakers. And then we invite writers from West and East Africa to speak in response to those South African writers. And I remember we had one panel on literature and commitment. And the featured speakers from South Africa were Dennis Brutus and Willie Kosinsile, who laid out the issues quite clearly, concisely, persuasively, Chinua was the, was the respondent from West Africa. Eli Masrui was the respondent from East Africa. Chinua got up and said, well, everything's already been said. And then gave his own contribution, which added a depth of profundity to the whole proceedings. It was really impressive. Chinua Chepi is one of the, the few wise men I have ever met. Yet, this too 
is a day of celebration and remembrance. Perhaps Achebe was prescient when he published his memoir, There Was a Country, less than a year ago. Again, nudging some of us, Nigerians in particular, to re-examine our memory of what we think we know about ourselves and all our history. Perhaps, perhaps. I end with a short poem for Achebe. Peri Roku has fallen, and the wall stands aghast, shaken by re re reverberations of an avalanche we did not foresee. In this year of memorials, in this place of remembering, whose signs were made centuries before us, we felt the great calling home, the journey back of a son, a brother, a father, a griot, ancestors waiting. How quietly time meets us, how brazenly it mocks our illusions of grandeur. How brazenly it mocks us. Dear brother, may the ancestors guide your return as they guided you, as they brought you to visit us. Lando. Lando. Work 
to back his uh, intellectual candor. So he came to where? America, the house that receives people. And there in Amherst, a few years later, he came back to Osaka, a professor with the book, Morning Yet, on Creation Day. That is, it's still early. Tao Guru, Morning Yet, on Creation Day. He was my head of department. And alongside him, we are such people who have followed E.N. Obiechina, the Anita Market Teacher of Fame, Donatus Ibe Morga, of the Oral Literature and African Literature Fame. The only survivor of, of them all then is uh, Echiru, Professor Michael Echiru. Professor Christian Chebek is their wife, was my teacher in high school at Queen of the Rosary College of Nature when she came in as a, an undergraduate from the University of Nevada. Nice petty dad. He stole, I mean, Achebek stole her, and she stole me. I mean, they are hearts. laid aside her work to look after her love. Miss, as I call her, because she taught me, I still call her Miss today. So I tell you, Miss, you forced yourself to stand beside your man, to nurse him, to care for him, strong in his dependency of you. But when we then told, you had to give him up. Your pen was nothing but the, the mightiest touch. When you published this for the part in 1958, you placed African literature in the canon, and it has remained there ever since. Dalo, thank you. My one regret, ladies and gentlemen, is that I edited a book last year called At Your Best Women, Colour. Imagism and Power, published by Africa World Press. And I was supposed to give you a copy. But I said, who am I? Why should I just send a copy to Achebe? I said, I will go in person and stay with him and meet Miss again and give him his copy. I never did. But he has seen it now, wherever it is. <laughs> Achebe, you gave women a position. You talked about them in your first three novels that we were voiceless and so we were. But then you corrected that image because the world corrected itself. And you wrote that of the Savannah with Beatrice, wine, Ife. A woman is something. Indeed, we are. Achebe, you know Zugo. Achebe, you have stayed up, you finished. Odogu Kim, brave man is who you are. <coughs> All right. If I continue and break down, so let me just say this little part and go sit down. Ide chi mwalu, chi mwalu mo kwa chebe. Achebe, you are achebe of the world. You are achebe of the black race. You are a Chebe of Africa. You are a Chebe of Nigeria. You are a Chebe of Igbo land, the Igbo child. And you are a Chebe Ide Ogidi. Chinwanumo. You completed everything a man needed to do in life, according to Igbo culture. You had a profession. You earned money. You married a wife. You had children of both sexes, and you know how they value sons. They all, he also valued daughters. Your children are well placed to the extent that your first son looks after you. You've done it all. You took a title. You made, you conquered the world. Achebe, now you do go in peace. So ladies and gentlemen, Achebe has passed. Achebe lives on. 
non -vigilic. Thank you. news about the fountain of our father. I asked Simon if I could, in a personal capacity, say a few words on behalf of the African Writers Series. So I am here, standing before you as a representative in a personal capacity of the African Writers Series. The history and legacy of the series would not have been possible without the huge contributions of Professor Chinua Achebe. The legacies he created have moved African writing to a world center stage. I'm sure James Curry would join me if he were here and the man whose vision created the African Writers Series, the late Alan Hill, and all the other colleagues who I worked with on the series, and all of you, all of us, would like to thank him for his unmeasurable contributions. A giant Udu tree has left our forest to join the ancestors. As we remember, and celebrate his life, our thoughts and prayers go out to his family at this very difficult time. When I heard the news this morning, I had a call from my son who joined Aibia Uli a year ago. He had never read an African writer's book, but the fact that he called me and wanted to tell me about Chinua Achebe from London, from the UK, made me realize the impact of what Chinua Achebe has created for all of us. The future generation is already hooked on to me, and it's something that I think we should all be proud of. And I'm sure the African Writers Series will live forever in the name of Chinua Achebe. In 2008, on the 50th anniversary of the publication of Things Fall Apart, Abin Abuzia wrote a poem in celebration of that occasion, which she read at source in London in October. Still morning yet. Chinua Achebe and your family. Dami Rifa Dui, Dui, Dui. Thank you.
as a mentor. About a year before that, in 1982, the BBC World Service ran a poetry competition for new poetry from Africa. At that time, I was a grad student, newly appointed but not yet started to the tenure track position at Rutgers that I still occupy. At that time, no one outside my family had ever seen my poems. And fearful, I sent them off to that competition. The award-winning poems were published in the Heinemann Writer series as Summer Fires, after the poem that actually won the competition by the great Jack Mapanji. But my little poems were included in that volume, which means that three years before I was ever published as a critic, or a year before I even formally received my doctorate from Oxford, I appeared first in print to the world as a poet. And Achebe was one of the judges. It is because of the vagaries of publication in Nigeria that Summer Fires came out first. But in fact, before the announcing of that winners of that competition, Achebe had selected my poems for publication in Okike, which came out a few months later. Something about which I am very proud. I speak here as one of his literary daughters. He was a father to all of us. And like many in this room, I have memories. Breaking bread with him at an African literature conference, walking down the street and having coffee after a lecture in New York. But my proudest moment was that day in 2008 when at the end of the two-day two -day conference celebrating the publication of Things Fall Apart, I had the honor of being the grill that signed him to the stage with these words. He is well known throughout the seven continents and even beyond. His fame rests on solid personal achievements. Fifty years ago, he brought honor to his people by conjuring up the man who could throw Amalinze the cat. This much we can say. Through him, we have learned balance is necessary but difficult. His progeny, all of us, no longer at ease in any dispensations, old or new, for the arrows of old gods, full of hope, still meet impediments. Like a man of the people, we must learn what the trouble is with us, and the lessons do not fail. In the ageless cycle of the time of the ant hills, he records new poems in an ancient language. In the evening wisdom of encroaching savannas, he crafts new language for old stories. As the moon encircles the changing earth, our stories must map uncharted territories. And though some died in his shadow, many others thrived because he showed us a way. Things are coming together. Our hero, Okonkwo, is 50. And in the measure of creation day and the time of the classics, it is still yet morning.
Um, we've had wonderful tributes from everybody. Uh, there are 400 people in this room. We could go for 400 times, 400 hours, and not complete what we need to do in order to mourn Chino uh, Achebe's passing. Um, but I think, in the interests of time, I'm just going to close things down and say thank you very much indeed for all of the people who gave such wonderful, passionate contributions.